Very interesting ruling coming out of Maricopa County, Arizona. The lawsuit involving plaintiffs trying to keep three Congress people off of the ballots. Representatives Gosar, Biggs, and Fincham all involved as defendants as candidates running for office again, and many people calling them insurrectionists and dangerous to democracy and all that stuff. So they're trying to use the courts, use the law to keep them off the ballots because that's what you do when you don't like your political opponents. You just try to keep them off of the game. Here, we're going to go through the order. You can see it's 19 pages long, filed April 22nd, 2022 at 8 a.m. out of the Superior Court here in Maricopa County. Big, big, gigantic case. We've got several different plaintiffs, several different defendants, all represented by many different attorneys. And when we go through here, we're going to start by noticing that a lot of this is surrounding motions to dismiss. So defendant Mark Finkjum, we have Paul Gosar and Congressman Andy Biggs. They all filed motions to dismiss the case back in April. We have different oppositions, of course, coming from the plaintiffs. They're saying, we don't want this case dismissed. We don't think these guys should be candidates anywhere. The court gives us a nice summation. They say that the plaintiffs, the people filing the lawsuit, filed the lawsuit seeking to disqualify Congressman Paul Gosar, Congressman Andy Biggs, and Arizona Representative Rep Fincham from the ballot in the primary election. Don't like your political opponents. You don't want to run against them sort of in the court of public opinion. You want to use the courts to throw them off the ballot. In this ruling, Rep. Gosar, Biggs, and Fincham all are going to be called here the candidates. So we'll see as we go through here. Plaintiffs, the people suing, say that these candidates are not qualified to hold office because they've been disqualified pursuant to federal law. What law? Oh, they're referencing the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution called the Disqualification Clause. And based on the lack of qualifications... To appear on the ballot, the plaintiffs also seek injunctive relief so that they actually don't show up on the ballot, saying that they're disqualified. And so what do we want to do now that we know they're disqualified? Well, Judge, we want to make sure their name is not physically printed on the ballot so we can't show them there. In the pending motion, the candidates seek dismissal of plaintiffs' complaints. So Gosar, Biggs, and Fincham are all saying this is what we want the lawsuit dismissed. Candidates argue that they are not disqualified, saying they should not be enjoined from appearing on the ballot in 2022. The court finds as follows, saying that they have jurisdiction to consider this. It's an election challenge. We have the authority to rule on this. Writing, the court finds as follows. Each of the candidates has filed a motion to dismiss pursuant to the Arizona law. ARS 163051B, which is the electoral law, says any elector may challenge a candidate for any reason relating to qualifications for the office as sought. So you can see the plaintiffs, the people filing the lawsuit, are going to be relying on that to say, hey, we any elector can challenge a candidate and we're challenging them. Under Arizona law, they establish what is necessary for the injunction in order to stop that somebody from doing something or to issue an order to, to do something. The plaintiffs come out with an argument and they say that the candidates are disqualified from holding office. Why? Federal law. They go to the 14th Amendment, Section 3. They say that's the sole legal basis arguing that they are disqualified. The disqualification clause providing that no person shall be a senator or representative in Congress or an elector of president or vice president or hold any office if they have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the country. The candidates respond, raising numerous arguments as to why, as a matter of law, they are not disqualified from serving in office under that provision of the Constitution. Court asks several questions. Does a private right of action exist for the disqualification clause? Like, can anybody just file a lawsuit and sue and say, hey, you're disqualified. The 14th Amendment says so, and I'm going to use this as a basis. Do you have a private cause of action? The defense, the candidates here, say there is no private right of action to enforce the disqualification clause. Few cases have interpreted this. Seminal case comes out of 1869. In Griffin, at issue, the court was discussing the construction of the disqualification clause. In other words, how did they assemble this thing and why did it all come together? Why did they write that in there? The court concluded that the object of the amendment is to exclude from certain offices a certain class of persons. Now, it's obviously impossible to do this by a simple declaration, they say, whether in the Constitution or in an act of Congress that all persons included within that description shall not hold office. For in the very nature of things, it must be ascertained what particular individuals are embraced by the definition before any sentence of exclusion can be made to operate. To accomplish this ascertainment, they say, 
and these can only be provided for by Congress. So they say the only limitations on that can come from Congress in that case, not from a private cause of action. A person can't cause the courts through a lawsuit to impose that type of penalty or that type of limitation. It's got to come through Congress. The court in Griffin went on to emphasize that it was imperative upon the United States to pass legislation to enforce the disqualification clause stating, now the necessity of this is recognized by the amendment, but we need some sort of enforcement powers. There are indeed other sections that apply. The court in Griffin then summarized how the disqualification clause was intended to operate. They say, quote, taking the disqualification clause then in its completeness with this final clause, it seems to put beyond reasonable question the conclusion that the intention of the people of the United States in adopting the 14th Amendment was to create a disability, to be removed in proper cases by two-thirds vote, and to be made operative in other cases by the legislation of Congress in its ordinary course. The conclusion mirrors the language, saying the Congress shall have the power to enforce by legislation the provision of this article. Paragraph 13 tells us that the words the Congress differs from the word state, plainly demonstrates, talking about the United States Congress, not individual states. That's why we have different words and we've capitalized the Congress and the term state. They're different meanings. Since the ratification of the disqualification clause, Congress has passed some legislation that enforces the clause. They've done it back when the first KKK Act was passed, they gave us some very clear delineations of how this applies and how we can interpret the rules for this particular issue. They say they have act, they have invoked a disqualification clause. Also, Congress has acted to create a private right of action for other provisions of the 14th Amendment, but they say here, Congress has not created a civil private right of action to allow a citizen to enforce the disqualification clause. Congress passed legislation in order to apply disqualification to the KKK Act. Here, Congress hasn't done anything. And we know that when Congress does something, they kind of know what they're doing, according to this, saying they, they are relying on their powers to apply a provision to a certain concept. In that case, disqualification under the KKK Act. Here, they have not done that, giving the people a civil right, a private cause of action in order to bring a claim. Haven't done it yet. So we can presume that they know they can do it because they've done it in the past and they haven't done it here. So as a court, we have to presume that that's intentional. We have to sort of read into that. He says, Congress is also presently considering legislation to enforce the disqualification clause. Oh, so they're thinking about it right now, which means they know they can't do it. Here, Congress has enacted a criminal statute prohibiting rebellion, although the court declines to express whether this is the exclusive criminal offense. They say here, the intention is only the government and not private citizens must be the party initiating the action. None of the candidates have been charged with, convicted of any state or federal crime that relates to insurrection or rebellion, obviously. The court notes that its conclusion that no private right of action exists is consistent with and supported by other cases like this one in Raffensburger. We see big paragraphs talking legal issues. The express language of the United States Constitution controls this issue. Paragraph 21, the disqualification clause creates a condition where someone can be disqualified from serving in public office. However, the Constitution provides that legislation enacted by Congress is required to enforce the disqualification pursuant to the clause. Aside from criminal statutes dealing with insurrection and rebellion, which Congress has enacted, Congress has not passed anything presently in effect which enforces this against the candidates. We see legislation that proposes to enforce this is pending, but not yet enacted. Therefore, given the current state of the law, no, plaintiffs have no private right of action to assert the claims under the disqualification clause. You can't just bring that. It's got to come through Congress or some other legitimate government body. Does Arizona, if the federal law doesn't create that private cause of action, does Arizona? Let's see. Does Arizona create a private cause of action? Plaintiffs say that federal legislation is unnecessary to create this. We don't need the 14th Amendment to get these candidates thrown off the ballots. We just need Arizona law. It says so right here, 16351B. The court analyzes it, says, Assuming arguendo for the sake of argument that Arizona could create a private right of action, notwithstanding the express language of the 14th Amendment and the holding in Griffin, the court does not agree that Arizona does create a private cause of action. So the judge is telling them, oh, that's very nice. 
if you think that we are the Supreme Courts, you think that the Supremacy Clause doesn't apply to, I guess, Arizona, that if the federal cause of action doesn't exist, that Arizona can just create it and supersede the baseline established by Congress. The judge says no. Next paragraph says that any elector may challenge a candidate for any reason relating to qualifications for office as prescribed by law. They talk about the word prescribed. He goes to the dictionary, tells us what it means. Election challenges and challenge statutes of other states historically have included provisions that prescribe candidates from holding office if certain conditions existed. Paragraph 30, it says, with respect to Rep. Gosar and Rep. Biggs discussed herein, the qualifications for members of Congress are exclusively determined by each House of Congress. Article 1, Section 5 of the U.S. Constitution says, each House shall be the judge of the qualifications of its own members. With respect to Fincham, then we have Arizona Constitution that establishes those requirements. You see those there, Article 5, Section 2. In sum, even assuming, for the sake of argument, that the court were to accept the plaintiff's argument that Arizona, and not just Congress, had the power to create a private right of action, Arizona law doesn't do this, although it creates a private right of action allowing citizens to bring independent actions to establish that a person has not met the requirements prescribed by the law. The plain language of this statute does not create the private right of action that a candidate is proscribed by law from holding office. In sum, a private right of action to enforce the disqualification clause was not created by ARS Arizona revised statutes. A little bit of nuance here saying that the government creates by the law a private right of action to say that candidate didn't cross the line, didn't cross those statutory thresholds in order to get on the ballot in order to qualify, creates a private right of action to argue that a candidate creating a private right of action, allowing citizens to bring independent actions to establish that they have not met the requirements. They didn't meet the threshold, but they don't have a right to say that person for some other reason is barred by the law for some other unidentified reason saying that's reserved for Congress. We see here there are other arguments being made talking about the Amnesty Act of 1872. Does that bar enforcement of the disqualification clause? So we can skip through most of this. You can see very much the same analysis, go through the issue, go to the rule, apply it, come to a conclusion. And we're gonna see as we go down a couple more arguments. Does the Constitution of the United States reserve determination of these qualifications exclusively for the House? And we sort of talked about that. What about the doctrine of latches? All of this is to say that when we get down to the ruling, the judge is going to be issuing several rulings. Number one, it is ordered granting defendant Mark Fincham's motion to dismiss filed on April 11th and dismissing the verified complaint. Bye bye. Another one, it is further ordered granting Congressman Paul Gosar's motion to dismiss also filed April 11th and dismissing the complaint against him. And lastly, you see here, it is further ordered granting Congressman Biggs motion to dismiss filed the same time. Now the judge is being careful here saying, let me go ahead and be clear. Let the record reflect, means the judge wants to make sure it's on there, that this ruling neither validates nor disprove the plaintiff's allegations against the candidates. They might be insurrectionary, racist, right-wingers, who knows, but that's not the ruling that I'm issuing. I'm just telling you that this thing is not with merit. The court expressly is not reaching the merits of the factual allegations in this case, but the underlying justification for bringing a lawsuit saying that there's a disqualification that is justified is not legal. And the court issuing a very good ruling, obvious the Democrats are going to try to use this continually. They're going to get just absolutely blown out in the November elections. And so you can see they're just trying to get everybody off the board. They may be able to win if there's no opponents to run against. And so they're going to try to get the rest of the Republicans off. They're going to try to use these as little trial balloons to see if they can apply this to Donald Trump at some point. Remember, these are all the little battles that are taking place. The January 6th fake select committee is really the committee that's responsible for trying to apply this same concept to Donald Trump later down the line if he happens to decide to run again in 2024. So very good news for the Arizona representatives. Shout out to my hometown. Hopefully there is no more nefarious shenanigans taking place here, but it doesn't mean they won't be taking place elsewhere in your hometowns. So keep your eyes out. We'll continue to follow this news and others. I hope you join us on that journey. I would love it if you subscribe before you got out of here because I look forward to seeing you on the next one.